In this video, I'm going to be going over 10 practice questions for the CompTIA Core 1 1101 exam. This is a brand new exam that just came out. So let's take a look at some practice questions. I'm Andrew Ramdia, and I am one of the instructors here at TIA. I'm also the one that does all the video classes for all of our IT classes. So let's go ahead and take a look at 10 practice questions. Now, these are going to be pretty similar to the actual questions that you're going to get on the test. So if you can do good on these, you're probably going to do good on your real exam. So let's go ahead and knock them out here. All right, so let's take a look. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the question along with you. What you should do is probably pause the video and come uh, pause the video, read the question, and answer it as best as you could. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing up here we're going to do is a technician has just received a computer from another department. He plugs it in and hears three beeps when the computer turns on. The lights are on in the front of the case. What should the technician do? A, fix the power supply. B, replace the surge. C, check the RAM. D, replace the CMOS battery. All right, what answer did you get? So again, you should pause the, vi pause the video uh, if you need more time. I'm just going to show the answer. So the answer here is to check the RAM. Now, if you ever put on a desktop computer, sometimes laptop, and you hear three beeps, keep in mind there's something with the RAM. More than likely, during shipment of these machines or movements of the computer, just being sitting there for a long period of time, uh, the RAM chips can get somewhat dislodged from its actual slot. And the best thing here to fix this problem is just take the RAM chip out. You know how easy this is. I cover this in the course extensively. I do videos, I show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. Just pop them out, pop them right back in. Just like that, you're, you're, you're on your way. Now, the other two choices here really, the, the other choices really doesn't make sense, especially A and B. It says fix the power supply and replace the surge. Well, if the power supply wasn't working, you wouldn't have had any lights in the front of the case at all. And the machine, if there was no power, the machine wouldn't have even turned on to even make a beep. If the surge was broken, the machine wouldn't get no power, period. Now, if the CMOS battery dies, you're probably going to notice that the, the clock, and this is a question on the exam, that the clock is going to go back, um, always going back to like 12 midnight all the time. So, and a lot of the settings that you change in the CMOS, things like hard drive boot order, maybe you have virtualization enabled, anything that you change in the actual bias of the machine, that's going to be reset all the time if the battery in that CMOS dies. And keep in mind, those batteries, they last really long. All right, let's take a look at practice question number two. A technician is fixing a printer reporting an issue with the paper jam. The technician thinks it is caused by a roller. What steps should the technician take next? A, identify the problem. B, escalate. Escalate a plan of action to resolve the problem. Establish a plan of action to resolve the probable cause. Test the theory to determine the cause and document the finding. Okay, what answer did you get? Now, answer. This particular question is a very common one on the actual exam. And the reason is because you have to know the CompTIA troubleshooting step. And in the course, we go in depth into this. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get the 1101 objectives. It's going to be, I think, the, the last section. The first one has the actual steps. You have to go into the exam room, not just understanding what they are, but you have to memorize them in order. So in this one, if the technician thinks, so what this is, is that he has identified the problem. That's one of the first steps you're going to do. Uh, he's establishing this plan of action to resolve it. And then he has test the theory. So once a, once a theory of probable cause is, fo is found, okay, once you know that theory, okay, he says, okay, maybe it's a roller. Then you have to test that theory to make sure. If it's all good, then you're going to establish a plan of action to resolve the problem. One of the last things you do is going to document your finding. That's going to be the last step. Always remember that. Document your finding is the last thing you do. So any which way, for your exam, make sure you know your, your uh, six steps, your CompTIA troubleshooting steps. Next question. A technician was asked by a company CEO to update the RAM in her laptop. What type of memory will the technician use? Sold them, ECC, SRAM, and virtual memory. So you have to know the types of memory and where they belong on this exam. Don't expect a ton of hardware questions, especially on this 1101, but you should still know them very well. The answer here is going to be sold them. So sold them, small outline dual inline memory module. Yeah, that's a, that's a mouthful there. Anyway, way, sold them is what's used on laptops. More than likely, your laptop that you're probably watching me on right now uses a sold them RAM. So when you are buying RAM for your laptop, you have to look for sold them. Some of them may use a micro dim. Those are going to be your smaller form factor laptops. Check in the 
Checking the manual of your laptop. ECC is error correcting. That's going to be used on servers. SRAM is static RAM. That's going to be used on caches, such as like on a CPU. And virtual memory is when you use your hard drive as RAM. It's not actual physical memory. Okay, practice question number four. A user, st a user stated that they cannot access the internet after they move from one floor to the other. When the technician checks the IP address and, and it currently displays, 169.254.5.1. What should the technician, what should the technician check in the office? DNS server, IP server, FTP server, DHCP server. Now, if you study IP addressing, which we cover pretty much in depth again, you should know that IP, that the IP address 169.254.x.x is known as a PIPA. That's an automatic private IP address. And a PIPA are basically self-assigned IP address. So the answer here, if your computer is getting, is self-assigning an IP address to itself, then more than likely there is no DHCP server or the DHCP server on the network is malfunctioning. DHCP server stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This is the server on the network. Now it could be on your router, it could be on a physical box somewhere that gives out IP addressing. So when you set your computer to obtain an IP address automatically, and there is no DHCP server, the computer says, oh, well, nobody wants to give me an IP. I'm just going to assign one myself to myself. That's how you get that 169.254. Make sure you know your address ranges for your exam. A DNS server translates domain names to IP. Nothing to do with this here. There's no really no such thing as an IP server. An FTP is a file transfer protocol. That's just a transfer in files. Has nothing to do with IP addressing, once again. All right, hopefully you're doing so. Hopefully you're doing good. An organization has just installed a web server for a new site. After two weeks of traffic, they notice the site is very slow. So they add a new web server. What should they configure on the server to ensure both servers can handle all the traffic? A, load balancer, B, virtualization, C, switch, D, firewall. Now you should understand basic server technology. You don't have to go in depth. This is A plus again. It's not like server plus or some Microsoft course or something like that. But you should understand that when you combine servers and you want performance from them, especially if you have a lot of traffic coming to a website, you're going to want to quote unquote balance the load. So let's say, let's say you have a lot of traffic coming like this. Okay. And you have one server. It's hitting that web, that server. What you do is you put a load balancer, either hardware or software, and you add another server. Then the load balancer will distribute the load between the, between the two different machines. The other choices here really doesn't make sense. For example, virtualization. Virtualization is how the service may work. It doesn't have to balance the load. A switch basically connects computers in a network. And a firewall will protect your machine. There's nothing here about security issues. All right, practice question number six. A user reported that when they open multiple applications on their computer, it runs very slow. But when they use a single application, it runs great. The specs of the computer are as follows. CPU, 3.2 gigahertz with four cores. Hard drive, one terabyte, RAM, four gigabytes. What components should the technician upgrade? Now, if you have ever used a computer that's pretty slow, one of the first things you wanna upgrade on the machine, I would tell you guys, is the hard drive with an SSD. But that they already have an SSD on here. So what I would do, the next thing to look at is going to be the RAM. Now you do notice this machine, it has great processor. It's really fast. 3.2 with four cores, really good, really good processor. They have an SSD, which is one of the best hard drives. If you guys don't have an SSD right now, go right now and go get one. That's a solid state hard drive. Now the RAM, you can't really run today's applications with four gigs of RAM. The more RAM you have, the more apps you can open, the more program stays open in memory. If you don't have a lot of RAM, you're restricting how much applications can be opened as the machine gets very slow. So you can see four gigs of RAM, not sufficient. In today's world, I think 16 gigs is optimal to run almost everything we need. Eight gigs is a bare minimum. Four gigs is ridiculous because you know what happens? Four gigs is just enough to run your operating system, such as Windows. Your CPU is good. The SSD is good. There is really nothing here that says there's a gaming problem or performance of graphics, so the GPU is not useful. Practice question number seven. A customer has requested that the wireless network supports MIMO. What wireless standard should the technician set up? A, B, G, or N? All right, put the answer here. Hopefully you got this one. Now, what you want to do for your exam is you have to know wireless standards. Know the pros and cons, know the speeds, know the, the channels, know the 2.4 versus 5 gigahertz, know which one supports what, know which one supports what speed. 
you need to know that for your exam, know what technology supports what. Now, 802.11, uh, and even though it's been out for a while, it's the most recent of the choices here, and it's the one that really supports MIMO, which means it's that's a technology that's used for sending and receiving more than one data signal simultaneously. All right, so make sure you know your wireless standards. Practice question number eight. A technician is looking to ensure the company's virtual resources have a 99.9% .9 uptime. What hardware should they should he implement? Cloud backup, UPS, surge protector, or a faster GPU? All right, let's take a look at the answer here. When you're thinking uptime, you're thinking something that can, boom, take a hit and keep on functioning. So this is called fault, this is called the ability to have high fault tolerance. So fault tolerance happens like, oh, the computer loses power, the hard drive dies, it's like a RAID system or a UPS. You see, if this, if you lose power, in the data center, if you lose power to your computer, if you have a UPS, the machine, nothing happens because the UPS keeps the machine going for generally 30 minutes or an hour. So depending on how big the UPS is, how big the battery is. Cloud backup, if the machine has a fault or some kind of problem, the machine will go down. You have to restore it. You will lose actual access to the machine. A surge protector, if you lose power, it doesn't keep power on the machine. And a GPU here will do nothing here in terms of uptime. It'll just make your graphics look nicer. All right, let's take a look, guys. Practice question number nine. A company is consider moving its, its on-site web processing to the cloud. They would like the server to be able to process large amounts of data during the day and very little at night. What aspect of the cloud are they looking for? A, metered service. B, elasticity. C, shared resource. D, is broad access. Now, you have to understand basic cloud concepts for this exam. You should know things like platform, infrastructure, uh, or, or application service and so on. So you should know that. You should understand basic cloud characteristics, which is what this question is. You should get a question on the, on something similar on your real test. Let's take a look at the answer here. So what they're looking for is what's called elasticity. It's, it's like a rubber band. When you use cloud services like Amazon's AWS, what happens is you can expand, uh, the amount of resources you need maybe during the day when you have a ton of traffic. At night when you don't need it, it can contract it. It's like a rubber band, hence the term elastic, right? If you take a piece of elastic, you can stretch it out and it'll come right back. So in other words, you're not paying for stuff you don't need. You see, if you use all what's called on-premises, if you have your servers, like maybe I have a server right here on this desk here. If you use what's called on-premises service, you're paying for a bunch of resources that's never really used. For example, in the middle of the night, if you had an on-prem super server, the machine is on with a ton of power doing nothing versus in the cloud with elasticity, you, when you need it, you get it. When you don't need it. It contracts back again. Metered service is paying by the hour. That's how Amazon charges you. That's not going to help with this question. The, the whole cloud is a shared resource. It's a ton of servers that people just share all the processing power to. Not, not here. Broad access means you can access the cloud from anywhere. Well, that's not going to help here. Finally, guys, practice question number 10. Users are complaining that there are duplicate images of duplicate images on all of their prints. What should the technician do to, to this laser printer? A, replace the paper. B, install a new toner. C, check the print setting. D, replace the toner, drums, and rollers. Let's take a look at the answer here. For your exam, you must know printer. Now, I did take this exam a few weeks ago. I did a video on it. You guys should check that out. And man, no joke but it was a ton of damn printer question. More printer question than any other topic. I had more printer question than any single topic, more than networking, more than hardware, uh, more than security. It was kind of odd. I'm gonna tell you guys, please review the printer sections in whatever material stood, whatever book you're doing, whatever video watching, whatever course you're taking. In the course, I cover printer in depth, make sure you know it. Anyhow, let's take a look at the answer here. So the answer is to replace the toner and drums. So this is called ghost imaging. That's generally a malfunctioning imaging drum unit. So I'm not gonna go into the specifics here, but the drum unit basically holds the image. When this thing malfunctions, it doesn't release the image or it doesn't get cleaned correctly. So you're gonna wanna make sure you replace the toner drums and the rollers. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, guys. I had 10 questions, we just knocked them out. If you guys enjoy videos like this and want me to do more, please put in the description below, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.